Welcome to this tutorial for Termite version 1.1. The plugin is specifically designed to provide an easy to use workflow for 3D printing of clay within Rhino and Grasshopper. Termite generates G-code files that are ready to be used with 3D printers such as the WASP 4100 as well as other CNC machines. By having a close look at the example file that comes with the installer and following a step-by-step -step introduction to the available components, this tutorial will help you to become familiar with the functionality of the plugin. Be aware that a basic knowledge of Rhino and Grasshopper is assumed. Let's state some basics at the beginning. Unlike conventional slicing software, Termite does not rely on closed volumes as an input, but rather on curves and surfaces. Due to the scale of 3D printing, precise control over each printing path is crucial to achieve high quality in terms of structural integrity and aesthetics. Therefore, in most cases you will want to use curves to define printing paths in order to build up your object. In Grasshopper, open the example file number 1 of Termite, which can be found in the installation directory or in the downloadable folder on Food for Rhino. It is advised to start every session with a fresh copy of this file, as it not only contains all Termite components, but also all necessary input components, such as panels or sliders with suitable ranges. Before we start, please check that your Grasshopper display settings up here match the ones of the tutorial. Additionally, make sure that the options Draw Icons, Fancy Wires and Full Names are activated. Throughout this tutorial, we will be using Rhino in its perspective viewport on the left and Grasshopper on the right. Also make sure to set Rhino units to millimeters, otherwise Termat will tell you to do so before exporting any G-codes. Once you have opened the example file, you will already see a preview of your selected printer model in order to help you to get a better understanding of the scale you're working in. Ensure that your designs are placed close to Rhino's origin point at 000, as Termite uses the same origin point for creating the G-code. The plugin contains a set of 16 Grasshopper components in four subcategories Main, Create, Sort and Display. Let's begin with the main G-code generator. On the left you can see all necessary inputs, while on the right you will see the outputs, such as a text preview of the G-code, the list of targets that have been created, intended for use with a 6-axis robotic arm, as well as an information panel displaying any success or error messages. A short description including any recommended ranges or units can be seen by hovering your cursor right above the name of each input or output. By default, the input parameters of all termite components are set to values that allow for successful printing with a VASP 4100 equipped with a 4mm nozzle. Since the main G-code generator component is fundamental to a successful 3D print, let's have a close look at each one of these inputs. The first input, Printing Paths, accepts all types of referenced Rhino or Grasshopper curve objects. Be aware that the order of referencing Rhino objects will affect the order in which the paths are printed. Now let's give it a try. Draw two simple curves in Rhino, reference them within Grasshopper and set them as input for the main G-code generator. You should now see the ready to print G-code as well as additional previews in the Rhino viewport indicating the travel paths along with a numbering to show the order in which the paths will be printed. Note that the travel paths between each printing path will be generated automatically unless defined otherwise, but more on this later. If your design exceeds the maximum volume of the printer, the preview lines will turn red and no G-code will be produced. The input pause points is optional and will accept point objects at which the printer is supposed to stop and wait for manual activation. Points in space will automatically be moved to the closest position on the printing path and marked with the word pause. The printer model allows you to choose your printer for visualization in the Rhino viewport. If you're working with any machine other than a WASP 4100 or 2040, please select Other to avoid being restricted by the maximum printing volumes of these machines. Nozzle diameter lets you choose between different standard nozzle sizes. Note that this value is only for estimating the material amount as well as for visualizing the material thickness, as it will not affect extrusion or flow values. 
With the first layer height input, you can set the height in millimeters for your first layer above the printing bed. By doing so, you can design paths in Rhino at zero height without having to worry about the first layer connection. In general, it is advised to use a layer height that equals half the nozzle diameter. As a rule of thumb, the first layer height can be slightly decreased to ensure a strong connection to the printing bed. Prefill extrusion defines the amount of material in millimeters extruded before each printing path. It is recommended to enter your average layer height for this value to ensure enough material is present outside the nozzle when starting the printing path. Default extrusion factor allows you to adjust the amount of material being extruded while printing. As various aspects such as viscosity, feeding system and the condition of your hardware components affect your material flow, this value is designed as a factor to quickly increase or decrease the material flow. A factor of 1.0 is preset for a WASP clay printer with a 4mm nozzle using an average clay mixture at an average speed. For your first print, it is recommended to start with a lower factor and gradually increase it to find an optimum default value for your specific setup. Default speed defines the speed of a printing motion in millimeters per minute. Be aware that this value affects all axes of your printer, also the extruder. Therefore the same amount of material will be extruded regardless of this speed setting. Travel extrusion factor and travel speed let you adjust the speed of each travel movement. Usually the extrusion factor is set to zero. Retraction height and retraction speed define the vertical travel path above each start and end point of a printing path in order to avoid collisions of the nozzle with previously printed paths. A minimum value of 2 mm is advised, but keep the value as low as possible to save printing time. Further, it is suggested using a lower speed value compared to the one set for travel paths. Safe start length allows you to specify a starting segment in millimeters of each printing path that will be printed with a unique speed. This speed defined in the following input named safe start speed can be set lower than your average speed to ensure a successful start of each path. Safe end length and safe end speed define a smoothening movement after each printing path. For open curves as printing paths, the movement continues in the direction of the last segment, while for closed printing paths, the extruded material is wiped back into the beginning. This results in a very clean and stable ending for each printing path. With the option Read Multi-Layer Names, we begin to move into more advanced features. Termite is designed to read the layer information of your referenced Rhino curves to use different printing parameters for paths on different layers. For this, it will accept Rhino layers or sublayers named Default, Travel, Slow, and Fast. If this option is turned off, Termat will use the printing parameters Default Extrusion and Default Speed for all printing paths, and Travel Extrusion and Travel Speed for all travel paths. If you want to use different printing parameters or dedicate the travel paths within one object, you will need to distribute your paths accordingly on different Rhino layers. Note that if you are using Grasshopper objects as printing paths, you must first bake them onto Rhino layers before referencing them again into Grasshopper. The following option, Connect Multilayer Paths, is only relevant if Read Multilayer Names is enabled. This option allows you to print paths as if they were joined, even though they are individual curves in Rhino, so the printer won't stop or travel between adjacent paths. The following input panels set the basic printing parameters for the layers slow and fast as described. The toggle Show Extrusion displays the extruded material around the printing paths with a material thickness defined by the nozzle diameter above. It is important to note that enabling this feature for complex printing paths may result in increased computation time. Further, we have options to toggle on or off the printer preview in the Rhino viewport via Show Printer and to toggle on or off information about automatically generated travel paths, small arrows indicating the path direction and path numbering by switching Show Information. The color of this overlay information can be also adjusted to suit your viewport settings. And finally, there is a button to save the generated G-code as a file. Alternatively, you can right-click the panel displaying the G-code, select Copy Data Only and manually paste the G-code from your clipboard wherever you might need it. 
Now let's move on with the second category that includes eight components that can be summarized as create components. This category encompasses various tools for creating printing paths for most commonly 3D printed objects. The modular approach of the plugin allows manually designed printing paths in Rhino and parametrically designed printing paths in Grasshopper, as well as a combination of both. The functionality of each of these components will be now explained more briefly, as they are best learned through hands-on experimentation. Termite Create Base automatically creates printing paths for printing a solid base of a closed planner input curve or surface. Various infill patterns, as well as a mix of different patterns, can be chosen to increase stability. Again, let me state that all preset input values here are configured for the use of a 4mm nozzle. Next we have Termite Create Contours from Surface, which works similar to the contour command you may know from Rhino, with the added feature of connecting each horizontal layer with a small step to create a continuous printing path. Like some other components, there is also an option to add a zigzag pattern to the printing paths, resulting in different surface qualities of the object. Termite Create Extended Printing Paths can be used to extend or reduce the length of a given set of printing paths. Extending curves that are used to fill a given boundary shape can increase the bonding between filling and wall segments, while reducing the length can be used for compensating the nozzle diameter in your design. Termite Create Shifted Seams is meant to provide quick control over start and stop points of closed curves as printing paths. An attractor geometry like a point or a curve can be used to strategically rearrange seam points. Additionally, by further randomly shifting these seam points, this tool ensures the uniform distribution of weaker areas, preventing critical damage during the printing process. Termite Create Sling Contours is an advanced contouring tool for tube-like objects that allows you to add slings in various patterns to the printing path. These slings can be fine-tuned through various parameters, resulting in a broad range of possible surface designs. Termite Create Spiral from Curve is a basic tool for printing objects along a spiralized printing path based on a planar curve. While Termite Create Spiral from Surface also results in a spiralized printing path, but its input is intended to be an upright surface rather than a planar curve. And finally, there is Termite Create Wall, which allows you to automatically create wall-like printing paths, including the option to add infill patterns for double-walled objects. This component accepts curves as well as surfaces as inputs. The next category named Sort includes five components developed for rearranging the order of your printing paths. Reordering paths is crucial for printing and it can also serve as an optimization technique by minimizing travel paths or increasing the bonding between individual printing paths. Remember that printing paths can also be sorted manually by referencing them from the Rhino viewport click by click. Termite Sort Along Axis is the most essential sorting tool as it allows you to sort a given number of printing paths from bottom to top, which is what you will aim for most of the time. Additionally, you can sort along a second axis within each horizontal layer. To achieve the best results while sorting, it is advised to familiarize yourself with Grasshopper's data tree logic, as the output of this component will organize your printing paths in individual branches of data. This way, multiple sorting components can be used in series. Termite Sort by Distance is a tool that lets you define an attractor point for sorting. This tool can be used, for example, to sort your printing paths from the inside to the outside of your object. Termite Sort by Length allows you to define the order of printing by the length of your printing paths. This comes in handy when placed after Termite Sort Along Axis, if you want to print long contour printing paths first, before printing smaller infill paths within each horizontal layer. Termite Sort by Travel Path allows you to rearrange your printing paths in order to minimize the travel paths in between. This simple nesting tool not only saves time, but also ensures a more consistent material flow while printing. And Termite Sort Out by Length simply lets you remove unwanted printing paths that are shorter than a given length. In the last category display, you will find two more components. 
One is named Termite Display G-Code, which lets you open G-Code files previously generated with Termite to recreate your initial Rhino or Grasshopper curves via reverse engineering. The other is named Termite Display Simulation, which allows you to visualize the printer's movement throughout the printing process to check for possible collisions. The simulation can be done manually, moving from target to target, or viewed as an animation. Use this component by connecting the output named targets of the main G-code generator to the input of this component. Although negative set values and paths placed outside the printing volume will trigger a warning, be aware that there is no automatic collision warning with already printed objects in Termite. Just like overhanging or bridging printing paths that might result in a deformation of the object will not cause any automated error messages. Remember that all of these components are meant to be used as modular tools, so your Grasshopper script might include multiple Termite components. Example file number 2 showcases a common way of using multiple Termite components. In this example, a manually designed surface is given a base with shifted seams, while the surface itself is spiralized. After combining these printing paths, they are sorted along the z-axis and each horizontal layer is further sorted by length. The final printing paths are inserted into the main G-code generator and are ready to be printed with a 4mm nozzle. For a more detailed description of the plugin and its components, refer to the README file included with the installer. For questions regarding compatibility and installation, please contact the developer.